<laughs> so I hope people get to this section of the podcast. I hope they're listening still because this is that little nugget of information that took me 10,000 hours time and time and time again to really fine tune and hone in. You are now listening to the Doors to Success podcast. Check. The girls in my mouth, What's up, it's your man B-Home, back with another episode of Doors of Success, where I lay out the B-Print, which is me teaching you how to knock, open, and conquer the doors to success in the different avenues of your life. So pretty excited today, we've got a guest on with us, Jordan Anderson, 20-year-old TikTok sensation, started with me when he was 17 years old, shouldn't technically have been working, but he did. We got him going, we got him in the program, taught him some things, and he's got on to be, you know, social media success. So, Jordan, welcome to the program today, man. Thanks, man. I'm excited to be here. So, it's been a minute. It's been a couple years. Tell me about, you know, what happened since we were together and until we're back together now. Yeah, it's been a while. I think, uh, so, pretty sure I left around 18, 19. Um, I went out. I continued to do solar. Uh, I went over into and sold in California for a while. As I was doing that, um, COVID hit uh, and left me ridiculously bored. So I seen how everyone was going viral on TikTok. I had a couple of my hometown friends that are blowing up. And I was like, why can't I do this? This is so simple. Like, yeah. we're funny. We're doing this. So we ended up starting a channel called Salt City TV. Pranks. Um, if you guys know what the Nug Boys are, it's kind of like that. Um but yeah, so we just did that. Um, I took a lot of the things that we had learned through our sales career um, and brought them in and applied them into that. So, you know, staying consistent, changing it up, being unique, you know, not just sticking straight to the path of what everyone else is doing. Right. And it was super fun. Uh, you know, we're still continuing to kind of do it a little bit. Now that COVID's kind of dropped a little less, we're getting back to work. Yeah, I like it. I think what's most impressive to me, man, and what I what I always found um, one of your strengths was no matter what the obstacle, you always found a way around it. Like whether we were in com- competition or whether we had like a bad snowstorm, you always seem to find a way to see the good in the situation and keep your level head and attack it. So like you're saying, COVID hits, your board needs some money or whatnot, figure out a way to go out and be uberly successful. I mean, let's just pull up your, your TikTok real quick. I think you got what your 160,000 followers. Um, you've got 4.5 million likes across the board, and your average video is like I'm I'm seeing 271,000 views, 87,000 views, 118,000 views. You got a couple here in the million. So, tell me about you know what is it about Jordan Anderson? What is it about your past? Take me back when you were young, what is it that makes you want to just, when adversity hits, what makes you want to just like go figure it out? Yeah, I don't, I don't dip into it much, but, uh, you know, my upbringing wasn't the, the best. Um, I was faced with a lot of diversity, a lot of things that like, I just got thrown at a very young age that had me grow up fast. So I think that it just took from, I took from that and basically implied it to my life right so when things started coming at me i knew how to you know bob and weave out and kind of when someone else you know like my high school friends they would think like oh man like poor me on this situation i'd say you know like no we still got this going on Mm -hmm. right like a lot of people during covid they were like oh poor me let's go get our social security check or our employment check and i'm like well i don't get that i'm on a 1099 in general so what else am i gonna do i gotta go make it happen and i had fun doing it you know what i mean and so going back to the whole childhood situation, it's, it's just like a, when you have a lot of things coming at you at a young age that we, I know we won't get into, but um, you learn how to take the best in every situation. And, you know, I'm glad that you can see that because a lot of people don't notice that. But, um, yeah, I took it straight from that with the whole social media thing, even with the whole solar uh, situation um, and ran with it. So I think what most of you guys don't know or see is that even where Jordan was making money on TikTok and, and the success, we at uh, our solar company, United Energy, we had experienced a 400% spike in our uh, sales 
during COVID as well. So we were having our major uptick. We were kind of getting big on social media. People were noticing we became number one and two with the three largest installers in the nation. And that's when you were kind of popping and you looked over and saw what we were doing and then COVID died and we kept climbing. Um, but what was interesting was when you reached out to me, you know, it was like, hey man, you guys are doing great. I'm in a great place in my life. But I just see like there's something else out there. I see where you're at, B, and I want to come be where you're at. So, you know, credit to you, man. You coming to me and asking for a personal mentor and asking me to kind of take you under my wing and take you to that next level is kind of what spurred on the idea for the B print. Um, so this is why it's kind of a fun episode for me is having you back as your own independent success, um, having the idea, helping like, hey, let's go offer this to a bunch of people who need this content that need this help. You are a direct product of the B print unknowingly. And now we're back putting it together. Um, what makes you so excited or what made you want to reach back out to me? And what makes you excited about this project that we're working on getting this content out to, to everyone that's listening in the sales world? Yeah. Uh, so starting out in my sales career, I remember uh, you were kind of all around. Just you were the regional. You had multiple teams. You know, we could catch you in Utah every once in a while. Um, but when I were, you were around, it was awesome. Like that was when I peaked my knowledge. I was always like, man, this guy just knows what he's doing. He's moving right. And I could see that. Um, and as I fell out, I kind of was, I always had that in the back of my mind. I was sitting there. I was always kind of lurking on your guys' Instagram or your YouTube or uh, your Facebook. And you're still driving the car that I liked, still doing what I want, wearing the shoes that I like. I'm like, dude, like this guy's still making it. Even when I'm watching solar companies drop, drop, drop. And you're just starting one up like right around that time. And I think so, the shoe game stepped up. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what I've seen, it's definitely go, it's up and down beyond. But um, when I came in and we had the conversation uh, and to kind of lay out the B print, when you we were kind of talk, telling me what your goal was w with it was mm -hmm. and where I kind of saw it going from, you know, my knowledge too, is you go into uh, any social media, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, there isn't really anybody that's not a big name that's sure. dropping the knowledge that you have that you're laying out for people. It's also a weird time to find a mentor, right? Because you're not going to, you know, business lunches or meeting with a lot of people how it used to be, or just getting invited to the section where you might be able to meet somebody with, you know, that's made the million dollars, that's done the things. And so I thought it was just a great option to just do it virtually and just you know, kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't have to be right next to you. They don't have to do any of that. They can learn it from all from sitting at home. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a game changer. And I think that's, if, I mean, everyone probably agrees with this. That's where it's heading to. So instead of you going and, you know, going and reaching out to a bunch of people like, hey, let me just come be your, you know, pet dog and run around with you while you're doing your things. Like, give us the main knowledge and like the B print mm -hmm. on how I get to where I want to be. And that all depends on where they're trying to go, really, of who their mentor is going to be. But personally, for me, I believed in it a ton because, I mean, everything that I'm working for is to get to where the place that you're at, mm -hmm. as cheesy as that does sound. I, I don't think it's cheesy at all, man. I think I've had people in my life where I've wanted to aspire to be and I've, I've laid out, I've gone and interviewed those people. I remember when I got in the sales space, I went and I sat down with the top five people in the sales industry that I could find in any avenue. Went and found the top mortgage guy, the top real estate agent, the top door knocker, the top telemarketer. And I interviewed all these people and I ended up working with or for these people at some time in my career, legitimately. Um, and if you're listening to this, you know who you are. Shout out to the mortgage world, the real estate world, telemarketing world, all these people that I'd, I'd mentored and latched on to. Um, in fact, Lance Orlob, one of tell you thank you, uh, Spencer Simpson, um, a couple guys that really allowed me to listen and, and learn and hear how they were doing it and take and, and uh, dovetail. Uh, Casey Baugh, Jordan Williams, I just appreciate your guys' tutors, tutelage and where it's taking me today. But I'm always a student. And I think as I see these people now in today's world, you know, you've got your Gary V's and I'm a big fan of Gary. And I think the reason why I like Gary is he's so real. Um, but I mean, you go look at what they've made and where they're at now and they almost are doing this out of, you know, where they're at. Like 
I think Gary Vee was like 17 million in revenue three years ago. Like that was what his tax return was and whatnot. We paid taxes on. And I feel like, you know, I'm not, I'm not 17 million. And I feel there's a big discrepancy between people that are making a, a few million. We're still hustling. And I'm, I'm in that stage where you're making a million dollars a year. I'm still in that stage where I'm still hustling to go get to the 17 million, but this level doesn't exist. And I feel like that's what people need to see. People wanna see the come up, they wanna see the grind. And, and that's my, you know, my take on it, but I feel like it's almost like the 17 million is, is out of reach. And so let's hear someone that's in the hustle, running a business right now, and what does that look like? I mean, that was kind of your pitch to me. You sold me on this idea. So, I mean, speak to that for a second, would you? Yeah, that's, no, that's exactly it. So, like I said before, these guys, you got, you know, Jordan Belfort, uh, all those guys, you know, all the big names. Those guys are all doing it at a certain point now where they've kind of already built the legacy. And I mean, besides Gary Vee, Gary Vee's still going crazy on them. But at, there's no one really in the business, growing the business while you get to watch them grow that. It's all stories, right? Mm -hmm. And a story can be, you know, misled, not saying any of those are, but I'm just saying that with your story, it's still going, it's not ended. With a lot of those, they're more plateaued, but with us, it's just going up. And so it's cool because not only do these guys get to learn, but you get to keep going and keep bringing them higher and higher. So there's no really peak to where you can take these people because you're not done yet. Right, and that's where I'm most excited is and, and the big thing for me, people are like, well, if you've made a million bucks, why are you doing this? Like, it's so interesting. Like, first off, if you don't have anything nice to say on social media, sh shut up. Like, good night. It's an, it takes so much for these people to put themselves out there. And at first, when I started watching Gary Vee a few years ago, I remember he would always talk about haters on social media. And I'm like, why would anyone hate on this guy? Like, and I started reading the comments. I'm like, man. So when I dropped my first social media video and it hit off, we hit you know, 250,000 views in the first 24 hours or whatever, 30% of them were just straight negativity. And I'm like, this is a thing. Like, this is a thing. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, this is crazy. And I first made the mistake of responding. <laughs> I, started, I started to engage in the, with the trolls and the internet never loses. Like, these guys are ruthless. And I mean, shout out to the internet trolls. I mean... Their game is on point. But the other thing, too, is that they're spending so much time, even if they're going to spend any time writing something negative, they're just spewing what's in their heart and in their mind, and they're never going to be successful at all. So I'd go in and see who this is, like like Xander36021, and I click it. He's got three friends and no posts, and he's following 500,000 people. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, man, those are, you're getting – Twitter fingers and these whatever. I just, it's just so sad. So if people are putting themselves out there, spend seven seconds and drop some love. Like that's the first thing I would say, what you've learned, what I've learned from this quick experience. Draw, just be positive and push positivity. You'll get better content from people and more engagement with love. You'll attract more bees with honey than you do vinegar. Like, come on, my grandmama taught me that like straight from the res. So the other thing is, um, I feel like when you asked me to do it, the reason why, why would if I'm in the movie books, what would you do Well, the reason is, is I watched my pops and my dad, when my dad sold his business, I was like 16, 17, and he really started to have that come to fruition. And when I was 18, I was already gone to college. I was already gone doing my own thing. I got married. I had my kids. Like I was already living away, started my career. And I missed my dad's kind of experience. And so, and now when I'm, I'm now where I'm at now, where I can start playing in the investments I wanted to play with him back then, he's done. Like he just sits at home and mows the lawn and follows my mom around. Like it's just, it's sad to me. And so I have vowed not to do that. And I love my pops. He's an amazing man, but, and he's chose what he's doing and I'm happy for him. I want to choose something different, not because I don't like what he's doing, because I want to do it differently. And what that is, is that I want my sons, I've got two boys, and I've been training them since they were little, like one and two. And I've been training them on all these principles. Everything that B-Print is, they, they have imprinted in their brains. 
hard work, dedication, time, energy, effort, everything that we go over, transitions, overcoming objections. My kids know these things. So, but they're going to miss seeing me right now. They won't remember this. So if I can transfer that, um, that knowledge and people that saw me now, saw me in my climb and my peak and, and at this time, then you can pass it on to my kids when they're ready. You tell the stories of what their dad did, and I'll still be around investing in the deals that we're already currently investing in. We've got some big ones that are happening right now that'll keep me still in the game, um, but that's why. So my kids can carry on my legacy through my, bro my younger brothers. I got some brothers that are 21, through you, through the other guys, through E. Shout out to Ethan. I mean, Ethan Blow, the Haitian creation, he's here behind the camera. No one sees you, man. Love you to death. He's my, I say, I, I say this, he's the 40 to my Drake. Without E, we wouldn't be here. So thanks, E. Shout out, E. Shout out, E. It's also a good time just to thank our unofficial sponsor, Red Bull. If you're watching, this is you. We're appreciative for you, Red Bull. Yeah. Dana. Love Red Bull. Kiwi Apple, actually, don't discontinue. We have major problems. So, uh, but that's why I'm doing it. Um, and I, I, that's what I want to drop knowledge now, here, and now. So, while people are like, well, that's a good story, and here's a guy who's actually a student, where everyone's like, well, you mentor me. Well, here's a student. He's going to be putting his B-print on his social media, watching him go through it. So let's get into the nitty-gritty of actual something that will give value right now to everyone listening. So what are you experiencing right now? You're out there knocking. You're out there hustling. You guys just had a competition. What is something that you're struggling with, switching markets, and you're in a new area, a new place? How can I help as a sales like giving you sales training and communication skills that will help you close more deals. What's something we can help you? This is a live question, live response for someone who needs some help. Let's give you some feedback. Let's go. Yeah. So like you said, new market, new objections, new things to, you know, but, uh, go against. So I think that one of the biggest things right now is transitioning. So how do you, how does B homes hit the transition? Great question. I, I first think it's important. Let's talk about what transitions are uh, because this is a wonderful question. Love this topic. Um, and a transition is valuable because it happens in any sales arena. It happens in any relationship. It happens in any type of communication. And if you can master this skill, you'll be able to handle any sales experience super smoothly, right? super smoothly. So a transition is any time that you're moving physically or emotionally from one location or place to another. Now that people are like, well, that just happens when you walk around or yeah. no, it is an actual science. And I've got some really cool skill sets that I can share with you and some tools to use that will really just be, no one's ever heard before that I've, I've shared, I keep as part of my like top secret vault stuff that I want to drop. Um, but a transition, again, is mentally or physically or emotionally taking from one state of being or location and taking someone to another, which, again, if you think about, is probably one of the more um, not, like, not talked about tools or skill sets, but probably the most important. It's the ride through the sales process. It's the, the shocks. Have you ever driven in a car where the suspension is blown? Bouncing. Like an old Model T, right? Versus uh, a truck that's got really great suspension. Transitions are your suspension, your gas, and your steering. Like that's what transitions are, and people don't even think about it. So, where are the locations or the uh, spots in your cell right now that you are are having a transitional problem? Like, where are you getting stopped? Hmm. I think it's uh, mostly. Uh, and I'm seeing with this a lot of the reps too. Um, it's to get into the home. Right. It's like with everything with COVID happening, um, I think that we all like kind of bear back a little bit from like what we've known and what we've done. It's just with the whole situation with that. Just the social media distancing. Well, the, yeah. How do you get in? How do you have a conversation with someone? How do you walk yeah, in? More like now, I mean, before it was just like so normal, right? To sure. just be going into someone's home and now it's, you never know what they're like super, you know, paranoid about with COVID, six feet, whatever that is. So, I mean, with or without that, getting into the home. Yeah. Let's address 
you know, thousand pound elephant, which is, which is COVID right now. Um, completely, um, you know, super, our hearts go out to anyone that's been affected by this. Um, my grandmother, um, actually my native grandmother, Ruth Shibata, we buried her in Anadarko, Oklahoma, um, passed away due to COVID. Um, so I, I am a direct uh, person that's been affected by, by this in my life. And so I take it very seriously. On the other end, I also take my you know profession very seriously, and I still feel there are ways to whether do your do cells do any kind of job, interact with people, be mindful of COVID and be aware of it, um, but still make your moves. And that is just call it out at the very beginning. You know, hey, I want to respect how you feel about COVID. This is how I feel. Uh, mask, no mask. Are you good with what are you comfortable with? And people will talk about it, and they'll tell you. And it's been my experience, the overwhelming masses are totally fine. Um, just make sure you keep your distance and, and, and still move. So that's the first one, but don't, I mean, it's not like the, it's not something that's gonna, you know, it's not like crawling on your skin, yeah. but it is something to be very aware of, right? Um, so that's the first thing with the COVID thing. But the second one is you're talking about the doors. So before we get into the different locations, and let's just break down the locations and let's take your industry, for example, you're doing door to door sales, right? Um, or a phone sales, it's whenever you are in the, the transition or the process of taking someone through the sales process, it's when you need to change the idea, right? So from your, your first seven seconds of your pitch or your hook or the salt, however you want to say it, to your presentation. In between there is a transition period, right? And then from your presentation to the close or whether that is the couch or the, the kitchen table or even on the phone to the clothes where you're getting your money ready or the signatures to transitioning that to getting referrals or setting the appointment, the callback or, you know, locking it down with any kind of tie down and then, you know, transitioning to leaving. So however you want to think about this, but let's, let's use yours for example. So if you're talking about getting in the door, there are first identifying, is this a transition that I need to use? A physical transition with or an emotional transition with okay and what that means is is that when you knock on the door or you're on the phone and the guy answers the door he's got the big bushy beard he's got the plaid shirt on flannel and he spins and he blocks the doorway he's like what do you want right he is there stuck physically and emotionally right so sometimes when someone doesn't move physically, I'll, I'll teach you how to move them emotionally. And that's the first, the first step is, is identifying, do I got to move this person? Do I need to transition with this person physically or emotionally and knowing how to do it? And, um, and then the second one is, is which tool to use, you know, and I'll talk about the two different tools that I use on transition. So um, let's take, let's keep going with the example. The guy at the door turns, he stops. Now, if you give him your pitch and he's still listening, and you give him your presentation, he's still listening, but when you go to walk in the door, there are some things that you've got to do to make sure that uh, the transition happens seamless, okay? Um, the first one I try to do is I'll either take him out to the street or around the meter. I'll get him to move physically. So I'll just start, I'll say, so I'll, I'll end the presentation, and then I'll be like, hey, have you actually seen how much sun hits your roof? We're talking solar. You ever seen how much sun hits your roof? Do you know which side of your roof gets the most sun? And as I'm saying that, I'm walking down his pathway back to the street. I'm like, hey, come on, show me which, which roof gets the best section. And I wonder if your roof would actually work for this. Oh, it wouldn't work for that. Yeah, well, show me which one you think. And he walks. If I can get him to walk out with me, it's, it's, it's game over, right? Because now he's moved. So if I can get him to move physically, I like to use the analogy here of a car. We'll get back to if transitions are the steering, the gas, yeah. and the shocks, suspension. Then in a cell, the transition is you, the customer is in park. How easy is it to mush, push a car forward or backward when it's in park? It's difficult. Impossible. Push it if you're pushing it. What about if it's in reverse and you're trying to pull on it? Drive yeah. and push on it. Yeah. What do you have to be in to move that vehicle? To be in neutral. Neutral, right? So knowing how to get a customer in neutral 
is the secret to all of this emotionally and physically, okay? So physically is easy. Let's just start walking. If they'll follow you, you can walk back in. I love to have people follow me right back in because walking physically is them bumping themselves into neutral. If you've ever been in a fight with your spouse or you get mad at a team member and you're in a meeting and you get up and you walk out or I walk out in my room and I shut the door and I walk back and I can talk to my wife again. You walk back in and you're good to sit down. Like moving yourself sometimes helps yourself get in neutral and that's a great skill set that people don't know. So go get a bunch of fresh air. When you're stuck and you're angry and you're frustrated and you just don't want to move, you're in park or drive and you're going to just bump in neutral, go for a walk, get yourself in neutral. Yeah? yeah? So uh, have you ever experienced that? Never, no. <laughs> yeah, of course, more than once. Tell me about it. Run, we're, it's a podcast. Okay. Well, so, I don't know. There's multiple times. I mean, dealing with, you know, I'm, I'm young. I'm getting girls, you know. You got to deal with some girls. You know how they are. Okay. Always trying to pick a fight, learning how to, you know, de-escalate the situation. Okay. Take myself out of it before, you know, anything gets too out of hand. Perfect. Love the example. Um, you told me that at a club the other weekend, this guy disrespected your girl kind of got in his face so what had to happen i mean if you would have stayed in that moment what would have happened versus you know what was that like yeah that's a perfect example i think that if he would have he would have stayed in that moment or what you're saying drive uh it would have escalated to something different not only would you know maybe there would have been a fight happen but that would have just been a night ruiner right sure. as soon as that happens we're done for the night everything's good but just like we were talking about take it in neutral de-escalate the situation, take a step back, whether that be him or I. Yep. And and just another big thing is just know that it's not worth it in the end of the day, right. right? If he says something to my girl or my boys or anything, it's not worth what's going to happen uh, with the outcome. For it. it doesn't really matter what it would be, right? There's right. nothing worth that. I also think, you know, and this is, we can talk about, we'll talk about this later, because this podcast we're talking about, you know, a we're highlighting a student and we're also highlighting um, a sales skill where in other podcasts we'll talk about the spiritual aspect of things, emotional, physical, social, mental. And in the, and this is a sales one, you know, as a, as a mental one, sales training, mental. We will talk about an emotional one, which is in any situation you have, it's a very real thing that there are two realities. You have two realities to every situation. And one person's reality is based on how they were raised, what their upbringing is, what their experiences have been that have led them to view things through a lens that is super jaded or clear or whatever, opposed to the other person. And that's going to be with cells too. So realizing that if I can bump this person in neutral, it almost helps them take their glasses off for a minute and you can take them through a process. So one of my greatest mentors, his name is Gordon B. Hinckley, he said, whenever you're in emotion, in an emotional state where you're moving forward, Go get some fresh air. Take a walk. Go bump yourself in neutral mentally. And I love that advice. And I'm, I use it in my cells all the time. So uh, that's physically. So back to this emotional one, right? So um, when you are taking them back or you go back to the, the doorstep and we're back on this moment and we're talking about putting it in neutral to get someone mentally or emotionally in a neutral state. There's one secret and technique that people do all the time, but it has nothing to do with what you think it would do. And I'm going to tell a story that will help, uh, you know, paint this picture. So in cells, we've moved a lot. We moved to uh, South Carolina and when my daughter was like eight. And I've said this before, but the meanest race in the entire universe are little girls. The little girls are the, like, all of them, from 8 to 18, girls are brutal to other girls. Like, it's so crazy to me. To, so we've moved almost 11 times in my life, and my little girl has been, you know, with me on all of this. I have four kids now, but my oldest, Lily, she's such a trooper. She's been to, I don't know how many schools, but we moved to a new school in South Carolina, and she kept home and she's like, dang, these girls are mean. I'm like, you got this baby, like positive affirmations. We're self-talking. We're going through these. I love myself a hundred times every morning. And I didn't understand until we went on a bike ride on Saturday and we went to uh, the park and there were some girls there. And my daughter goes, daddy, these girls are my class. 
I said, oh, she's like, that's the mean one. I'm like, oh, well, go talk to him. Like, go make some friends. So I kind of like was listening and I walked up with her and my daughter walks up and there was four of them. And she's like, hey guys. And they like kind of just look at her. She's like, I'm Lily, I I just moved here. And they just are like, oh, well, we don't know you. And she's like, well, do you go to Daniel Island Elementary? And little girl's like, "Uh, yeah. And she goes, well, do you know Miss Johnson? She goes, "Um, yeah. She's like, well, you know how there's that turtle tank? Yeah. She's like, I sit right next to it. Anyway, let's go swing. Do you guys want to go swing? And she runs over to the swings, and the three girls run over. And the girl that was being the mean one that was answering the questions, she was like there in the days, and she ends up just walking over, getting on the swings, and I watched those four little girls play for almost a half hour, and I sat there in awe. My little girl took these girls through a transitional process from being some mean little biker gang of eight, ten-year-olds, however old they were, and my little daughter defuses the situation and gets them all swinging, playing and icy together. And I'm like, that is powerful shit. Like, that's amazing, right? So let's break it down. So the first thing that happens whenever someone's in park or drive or reverse and they are moving angrily, frustrated, whatever, to bump someone in neutral, all you have to do is ask a question. That's the secret. Questions. It's crazy. And what will happen is if you ask a question that they don't know, what will happen is, is that their eyes will go up and to the side. And when they do that, the human brain is thinking, okay? Now, this is very important. This is where we break down psychology. The human brain can only focus on one thing at a time. And people in general want to follow sales guys that know what they're doing so they can trust them, right? And they can be led through an experience. I want someone to make the sales process smooth. And if salespeople can make a great sales experience smooth, they're going to love it, right? They, they, you, you like to, I love to be sold, like it with a with a professional salesman. They make it nice and seamless, clean. clean. All those words, nice, clean, seamless. That all are words that define the transitions that you went through, right? And it all based on the questions they ask, right? So um, when you ask that question and the human brain goes up, it can't be thinking on two things, and you want a professional to step in be knowledgeable, be professional, and lead you through the next, to the next process. And that's how you do emotionally transition. So you ask a question, hey, so do you get your bills online or in the mail? And when that person stops for that split second and they look up, they're bumping their brain in neutral because they can't be like, I'm the man of the house or I don't want you on my doorstep. Hey, is your bill in the mail or or, uh, online? And they look up, uh, they forget for the second that they don't want you on their doorstep or they don't want you on the telephone. They have to think about that because you were asking them a question. So they go, hmm, do I get a letter right now? And in that moment is when you can transition. So a couple things that happen. Uh, did you ever play Mike Tyson's Punch Out? Any 80s babies out there? This is going to get half the people going crazy. The other half are, are not going to uh, know this analogy or what I'm talking about here. But I call it the Jedi secret of Mike Tyson's punch out. Okay, And that is when Mike Tyson's punch out was a game back in the 80s through Nintendo. And you could be this little Mike guy. and you get a, Or Mac is his name. You get to fight all these people. There was a guy named King Koopa, I think is what his name was. If I'm right. I think so, yeah. And... You punched him in the gut like five or six times, and if you got him enough, his eyes would roll up in the back of his head, and when they do, you could do an uppercut and knock him out. I can win the round if you knew that little secret combo, right? So in cells, the punches in the gut are the questions that they don't know, and when their eyes go up, that's when you can actually step up and boom, knock him out, right? And that's in cells, and I'm not saying actually knock him out, but I'm saying take them through the process at that moment when they don't know what's happening, okay? So when you ask the question, you get your bill in the mail or online, and they look up, um, that's when you do a couple things. One is I like to snap, or I click my pen, and I point, I put my head down, and I start moving my shoes, and I start walking in. Now, people are like, you, don't, you just walk in? 
Yes, I do. And the reason is, is that the people are thinking about their bill, right? Their mind is somewhere else. My intentions are 100% pure. I'm trying to go help the person move to the next step in the process. Mind you, I'm already like 14 minutes in the sales process, right? I've already given them seven, sec seven seconds. They've given me the next seven minutes. I've gone through that twice and now I'm ready to transition. And knowing when to transition is another skill set we can talk about later. But when you're ready to transition, so you're, you're in with this customer, right? And they're just kind of being stuck and you can't pull them physically. Hey, so did you get your bill in the mail or online? Uh, let's take a peek real quick. And the wording is important. Let's take a peek real quick. So when I say let's, that is a mutual agreement. We are doing this together. Let us together, which is like, I'll take a peek real quick. It's like, no, you won't. But if it's like, let's take a peek real quick, like we're going to do this as a team. Creating team with a customer is so important. Let's take a peek real quick. And taking a peek is such an, like, it's, it's a non-intrusive word that allows the customer to just kind of, okay. Like, but if I was like, let me inspect. The numbers on your no, no, I don't want an inspection. Or let me go through with the with the comb and really dig in. Like no one wants that. No one has the time for that. They have time for a peek. So let me take a peek real quick. And if it's real quick, that's okay. I got time. You know. So let's take a peek real quick. And I point, I snap, and point helps me remember I'm going in. I'm pointing where I'm going. I'm calling it out. I'm putting it out in the universe. I'm going in, head down. And I put my head down because I don't want to look them in the eye. This is the moment where they're thinking a lot's happening right there emotionally and mentally for them. You just ask them a question. They don't know. You said, oh, let's take a peek real quick. We're going to do this as a team. He's walking in. In this weird, crazy, emotional moment that people don't even realize is like a really big moment. If you stare them in the eyes as you walk by, it feels creepy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever done that? And what's happened? It's just ridiculously awkward. <laughs> like, the, the, have you ever, like, seen somebody you know from, like, across the way, you know, or in a room, that uncomfortable, like, glare? Yeah. That's exact. that would be the best description. So people out there will be like, I tried, your, I tried your trick, and, like, it didn't work. And I'll say, did you stare him in the eyes when you walked by? No. I'm like, okay. And then I go out with him, and I watch him, and they're like, just... People are looking or waiting for them to say no. Yeah. They're looking for approval. This isn't your time to look for approval. This is when you're stepping up and you are the sales professional. You've got to know that. You have to be confident in this move. People won't follow an unclear bugler into battle. They won't, right? So you've got to be a very clear bugler and a very confident person in this moment yeah. and say, "I let's take a peek real quick. Head down, point, look, walk, start moving, and that way you're not gonna be a creeper. You gotta be positive, you gotta be, you gotta be sure you're moving. You can't do this one half assed you can't be timid on this one, or it will backfire. Yep. So don't be timid. Yep, just like when you uh, taught us like first person to look up or talk loses. Oh yeah. When you're when you're trying to get any manager information, you know, come to the time when you're running credit. Ooh, you can't give them too much, but this is a little free tidbit. If you're trying to get any major information, first person to look up. First person to talk loses every time. Loses. So head down. Don't look up. Don't look them in the eye. Keep moving. Okay? So the snap or the pen click, and I actually transitioned from a pen click to a snap, it goes back to another psychological technique with, uh, that was invented by Pablo's dog, this theory of Pablo's dog, which Pablo was a man who trained dogs at the sound of a bell or a whistle. He would make a dog salivate because he'd give it food, right? So what I've started to do is early on in the cell right now, I'll snap and I'll transition and I'll make it seamless for them so that they'll know what's happening and that my snap, what it means, I'm conditioning very softly. I'm imprinting that I'm when I'm snapping that I know what's happening next. I'm in control and I'm in charge and I will help you through this process. So snap, let's take a peek real quick. I move, we're going in. From there, from the from the inside the, the entryway, perfect. We sit here, over there, over here, great, snap. Let's go over here real quick. I snap, point, move, we sit down, hey, so sign here real quick. And my snap lets them know I'm moving. And I'll snap four to five times each transition 
so they know I'm moving. And you gotta practice it or else it seems funky. Why I went to a snap was we used to use pens all the time, you know? Yeah. And then when I went digital with an iPad, I literally one time I, <laughs> I was like, could couldn't click. So I started snapping. So uh, snapping helps indelibly in plaque on the customer's brain that I am moving you confidently to the next step and it's safe and I'm confident, pointing where I'm going, head down, I'm not a creeper, and I start moving my feet like and I'll say, let's take a peek real quick. And I go, and as I'm brushing my feet, I'll say, do you want my shoes off here or over here? And they'll say, oh, it's okay. Or they'll say, oh, right here is fine. And by them answering that question at that very moment, they're actually doing something. They're answering another question, which is what? You know? So if I'm asking them, should I take my shoes off here or put them here or here? And I'm walking in the house. What are they actually agreeing to if they answer that question? Well, first you're getting them in a rhythm of like you, I don't know, I actually don't know. You do. So think about it. So if I'm walking in your house and I say, hey, let's take a peek real quick. And I walk in and say, hey, should I put my shoes here or here? And you say, oh, just put them over here. What did you just give me permission to do through the... Oh, come on in. Come on in. Like you just gave me, I said, should I take my shoes up here or here? And you say, put them here. Sure, I'd love to do that. Yeah. Right? So you just gave me permission to come in your house, take my shoes off. Or did you really? You did, but I framed it in a way that allowed me, or you, to invite me in, right? So, so to get your bills uh, online or in the mail? Um, perfect, let's take a peek real quick, snap, just me, walk in, hey, uh, should I take my shoes off here or put them here? Put them there, perfect, no problem. Uh, you, that bill, and sometimes I'll get in that moment and they'll be like, uh, like I got in and they'll be like, Looking at me like, oh, what just happened? Hmm. Like, oh, so the bill online or in the mail? Oh, yeah, 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 online. And all the time. Wait right here. Oh, yeah, let me grab it. Or if it's awkward and they're like, uh, I don't have my bill. Or whatever it was, right? Because we just, we just got in. Yeah. Then I'll say, oh, is it best to sit at your kitchen counter or on your living room couch? And the reason why I give them an either or, why do you think? Why do you think I give them the kitchen counter or the living room couch? Whatever one they're more comfortable at. Whatever. So they feel comfortable. And number two is, again, they're answering, yes, yeah. we're moving to the next. Get him in a yes motion. Yeah. All yeses. All yes answers. And what if I said, should I sit at your kitchen counter or should I go out your door? Yeah, that's taking them completely out. Right. Like, I have to give them options so it's, it's continued them yeah. to say yes, 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 yes. Without saying yes, they're just answering my either or questions. So learning the either or questions in the transition Knowing the psychological moves, right? Head the question, look up. And I think it's important here, like with Mike Tyson's punch, I just think about this. It's the punch, punch, punch. Sometimes people know, right? So if you're like, what if they know the answer to the question? Because it has to be a question they don't know. They have to think about it. So if I tell you, and I hope the camera can show this, but if I tell you, hey, do you get your bill online or in the mail? and you know it, you're gonna look at me and answer the question. 100%. Online or in the mail? No. Perfect. <laughs> so even you looked up right there, I could've got it. So I love doing this in trainings, because guys are like, I'll even tell them, I'm gonna get you to look up. People are like, no you won't. I will really get you to look up. And then I'll ask a question like, so do the kilowatt spin left or to the right on your meter? Perfect, let's take a peek real quick. Even right there in this scenario, you're looking up. Everyone does it. Your brain has to do it. Like it's crazy. And knowing that about human psychology, boom, makes our sales job so much easier. Yeah, so, much easier. so using people's natural habits and, and way they move, if you can master that, game over, because they have to do it. So if they know it and they respond, that's fine. Next punch. Ask another question, like my daughter did. Do you know do you go to this school? Do you know Miss Johnson? Do you know the turtle tank? I sit right there, let's go to the swing set. Snap, let's go, right? So it was really cool to watch. So what's your biggest takeaway when you hear all that again? I know I've trained you on that before. But what's your takeaway on that? I think that it's funny because I think a lot of people, if you're not, not in the industry uh, or you're just getting into it, they don't believe that right. this actually works, right? Like if we, if we went and told a stranger, like, I guarantee I could get you in this house, but you just cannot make eye contact with them. And if, I'm going to tell you the exact words to say, but you cannot make eye contact with them as you make the intro in. Right. They're like, no way. Or like the Mike Tyson punch out thing. I guarantee you I can get them to look up and to the left with just a couple questions. Right. Some people would bet, you know, hundreds of dollars on that. And it's crazy because it actually works. Like right. you said, I've been trained on this and I've done it. 
just like when we went back to the, the clothes thing, I remember that's one of the biggest things and I don't want to drop too much on it, but I was always, I was new, I was 18, I was having a rough time. Like I was so nervous about running credit. And as soon as I learned that major key thing, first person to look up loses, first person to talk loses. And I've been in uncomfortable situations of five minutes of like staring straight down the iPad, looking back up. Okay, what's the last score? Yep. And it just, you, it, it's crazy because this stuff is all legit and it works 100%. <laughs> so I hope people get to this section of the podcast. I hope they're listening still because this is that little nugget of information that took me 10,000 hours time and time and time again to really fine tune and hone in. Um, to learn this nugget took me many no's. I've, I've had many people block me in the doors or stop me or m- I hope this saves hundreds or thousands of salespeople on getting in the door smoothly, helping the customer. And again, I'm doing this because I want the customers to have a great experience. I, I truly do. Like I want sales to have a wonderful name because our profession is the greatest profession of all time. We take sales is needed in anything you do. I'm a doctor. I'm a de- you're selling your procedures, you're selling dentures, you're selling your teeth, you're selling yourself, whatever it is. And I'm gonna, along with Jordan, I'm gonna have other people that have been students of the B print of, of my trainings of the last 10 years, I'll have them as guests on this podcast and show people that from all sorts of different walks of life, after, if you learn these skills and you take this to the NFL or you take this to being a, you know, a, a public speaker, or you take this and you go run your own podcast or, or your own show, or you take this and you go and be some CFO or CMO or CSO or even an exotic dancer, you will learn these skills and it'll make you a better professional in anything you do. And that's what I just love about sales. It's the, it's the drive. It's the, it's the suspension, the steering, the gas of any time you're transitioning emotion or your product. So uh, thanks for that. But um, so with all that, again, what questions do you think some people would have? And maybe we go live here for a minute and we pull up some questions yeah. um, on what people are are uh, are asking that would be valuable for people. One thing I think it's valuable for just to, you know, put this on you. I'm going to just tell you guys. So I'm telling you guys, the B print has elevated my life com- so much that I can't even explain whether that be in my relationships, whether that be in business, whether that be in my social media fun time, you learning these major things that Brandon has given you, like he says, these nuggets are going to elevate what you do and how you live. It's huge, I'm telling you guys. It's not, this isn't any BS, this isn't a joke, this is straight up. This is gonna take you from average to way beyond that. All right, first question uh, we have on uh, Instagram. Um, when do we use a transition? Let's share that. When do we use a transition? I mean, like you said, you earn your first seven seconds, get that done out of the way. Uh, the first transition is the first thing you want to get done, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're wanting to go, like we have to use it for you, the bill, right? If you're going to use that first transition, you use, you know, Mike Tyson knockout punch, yep. just like you said, get the bill paid or paperless, perfect, let's take a peek, get in the house, head down, walk right in. Yep. So on the doorstep, if you want to go, let's say the person's stuck. So if I'm knocking the door, we have the little the pitch. So the first thing you do, if they're stuck, ask the question. Okay. So hey, is your meter on the left or the right hand side of your house? Uh oh, you know, I saw it on the left. Follow me. Yeah. Snap. I'm even snapping. Snap, let's go. And I start walking and they follow me around and I get to the meter. We're here. Oh, perfect. So it looks like your meter is one of those net meters we're talking about. Uh, do you get your bill? Does it come online or in the mail? Or do the kilowatt show on the left or the right hand side of the page? Does it report annually or daily hours? Does it? Uh, you don't know? Per- Let's go take a peek real quick. I can tell you if I see it. I'm the professional. Let me see it. I don't say that last yeah. part, but that's what I'm thinking. Perfect. Let's go take a peek real quick. Snap. Let's go. What? <laughs> My favorite part is if we're on the street and I'll say, I'll transition in the house. As I'm walking, I get to their door. I'll be like, hey, come on in. And I let them in their house. They start laughing, and if they're laughing, I'll high five them. Sales close. Sales close. Laugh, high five, invite in the home. You got it down. All right, next one. Um, so, when do we have to transition? Well, 
Um, you have to transition any time that you're taking the customer from one experience to the next or any time that you want to get it through smoothly. Again, it's quite, it's the other, the other like gurus or people that are trained on sales, they talk about question-based selling, right? It does a few things that leads you to the next topic. It helps the customer overcome their objections. And primarily, it's a great transition tool if they don't know the answer to the question. But that's their secret is make sure if you don't, I've watched guys try to transition when they don't look up. Mistake. Don't do that. Make sure you ask a question they don't know. Eyes go up. Bingo. That's when you say, perfect. Let's take a peek real quick. Snap, point, head down, brush your feet, walk. Shoes off here or here? Perfect. Here. Thank you. All right. Uh, that bill? You're going to give me the bill? Oh, yeah, yeah. Great. Boom, you're in. If I can help more people, guys and gals, transition in the door with that little trick, Man, my, my purposes are served here because I feel like that would just elevate our whole industry because that experience is so bad with people sometimes. So bad. Um, what else, man? Any, any, other, uh, any other things with transition that you've noticed or questions that you're experiencing right now that's, that's, that's going on that's rough? Are you having a, getting stuck? I, uh, I think that that might be it. Perfect. I think... Uh, last thing I want to do, we got some more questions. We can answer those later though. But I think I want to end on this, this thought, this topic here. Okay. And this is um, the transitions in our lives or our careers, right? I feel that we sometimes don't transition ourselves. Who thought, who saw that coming, right? If we can learn how to help others transition, Helping ourselves transition is the game changer. So in life, there's always going to be experiences with people that you're going to either disagree or have a fight or it's going to be a misunderstanding. And I kind of spoke on it, but if, if there is a, a situation where you are stuck, you are stuck mentally or emotionally or physically, you can't move, you can't get out, you're angry, mad, irritated, anything that makes you feel you're in drive, and, and check yourself. Man, check yourself. That's been one of the greatest, greatest tools I've ever had. Check yourself. I had a, a volleyball coach, Rob Bruff, back at Olympus Junior, shout out to Rob, that he used to say that all the time, check yourself. And just a quick little check of where you're at mentally and emotionally, are you, are you good? Are you good? If you're angry, mad, or whatever, breathe. Bump yourself in neutral. Ask yourself some questions. Hey, is what I'm doing okay? Is this person really trying to hurt me? Is this a bad situation? How would I want to respond in my best self? Like, if I was to bring, and this is a question I asked myself. I just We just had a, a large investor come chat with us today at lunch. Um, and we were sitting there, and he was saying something I wasn't agreeing with. And I just, I felt myself getting frustrated, and I wanted to pull out the numbers and and go back through and prove that something else was not the way it was. he was seeing it. And I just, I closed my eyes and I asked this question. I said, if I were to respond blank this way, and I wanted the result to look like this, the very best outcome, what's the very best outcome? Is, is my response going to generate that outcome? Do I want this to be a fight? Do I want this to be an argumentative back and forth? Do I want this to harbor ill will? Do I want this? Because if I want that outcome, then I'm going to respond how I'm feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And there's this good, better, best idea where I could respond good, which is, hmm, why would you say that, right? Why would you say that? Which is a fair question to ask in any negotiation or business dealing or relationship. And... But will that yield the best result? Would that yield the best response? And it, the answer is no, but it's still good. It wasn't me yelling or fighting or screaming. That's good. What if, or what if I said, hey, I don't think your numbers are right, but you should look at it this way. That's better, but the best outcome would be me to say, Man, I really appreciate your viewpoint there. That is something I haven't looked at before. I'm going to go back and relook at it that way because I really see the value in what you're saying. 
if I say that to you, do you are you more inclined or less inclined to see things my way? More inclined. In fact, you would welcome it. In fact, I did that. I caught myself. I did that, and the guy goes, "Well, what do you what do you actually what are you what are you trying to say?" He invited me to share with him what I ultimately wanted to, and I was able to share with him. And then my point got across. And he's like, "Oh my gosh!" He goes, that, "That's great. I didn't even see it that way. Thank you." And I was like, "Perfect, right?" So, in any scenario, transitioning through your life, through careers, with COVID, with everything that's gone on, with the workforce shutting down, and do we transition to, you know, in in home or in office, or how do you with your career? Should you try something new? Should you transition yourself? How do you do it? Take a moment. Breathe, calm down, get level-headed, bump yourself in neutral, ask yourself some questions, which is, if I handle this to the best of my ability, what would the outcome be? Do I like that outcome? Yes. What is the best of my ability? This is what it is. Begin with the end in mind, Stephen Covey thought. Begin with what do I want the outcome to be, and then how do I got to respond to get there? Your brain actually is a crazy tool. You can do that exercise in literally five seconds if you practice. So practice on silly things. Practice on the lawnmower. Practice on things that give you, if you stub your toe. Stub your toe. Dang it. What? The? Okay. How do I see this ending? Do I want, what do I got to do to get there? Well, I want it to be done hurting and I want it. Okay. So I shouldn't be mad at my door or the dough because it's like, great. I'm just going to breathe and walk away. Even little things. Practice that, that little uh, exercise. And when you get in a big deal where there's millions of dollars on the line, the outcome will be, will be assured. So. Jordan, thanks for swinging by, man. Any anything, uh, any last tips from you? Uh, thanks for having me on, man. And uh, I think the the best tip you guys are going to be able to take right now is literally follow this B print to the T. And like I said, it is going to take you from where you're at to where you want to be, 100%. So should we go live on TikTok or Instagram? Perfect. Let's pull your phone up. Hop up. Got him. Got him. Really really All right, man. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you, man. Let's go get him. Sure. Get it. Thanks for listening to the Doors to Success podcast. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share for more content. Head to behomes.life to sign up for our newsletter to be notified of the next free live event.